Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Well, good morning. Christmas is less than two weeks away. Can you believe it? Less than two weeks away. Are you ready? Are you ready for Christmas? And, and what is it that gets you ready? Yeah, for some people, it's the singing. And if you like the singing, three o'clock this afternoon, there'll be a lot of singing right here in the sanctuary with a choir, orchestra, be wonderful. You'll have an opportunity to sing along too. And for a lot of folks, it's the singing that gets them ready for Christmas. Other folks, it's the smells. I think my wife bakes a lot more this time of year than any other time of the year. And I love the smell of things baked in the house. Don't mind eating them either. At, for a lot of folks, it's the smells. Sometimes it's the smells that aren't just the baking smells. It's here at Christmas that we bring the outdoors indoors. Cut trees. There's something about that smell of a Christmas tree. It gets a lot of folks ready. I remember when I was a kid, my father bought a, uh, an artificial tree for the first time. He was so proud of it. Tree in a box. He brought it right there to, to, to open it up right in front of the whole family. It looked like a giant bottle brush is what it looked like. And as soon as he opened it up, my sister, who's a little prone to the dramatic, she said, that thing doesn't even smell like a Christmas tree. You've ruined Christmas. Who knew she needed to smell Christmas? Well, <laughs> there, there are a lot of folks that need to smell Christmas, need that, 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 that fresh cut tree smell. Is it the smells? For other folks, what gets them ready is the, the hustle and bustle, the getting about, the the the, the traffic and the, and the hurry and all those things that, that th take part this time of year during Christmas. I, I think it was just, just last week. I, we were at a, I was at a stoplight and, and in the car right next to me, I, he looked like he was getting ready for Christmas because that light had turned from Christmas red to Christmas green. And I couldn't hear what he said, but it, it looked a lot like he was saying, peace on earth. Or it might have been goodwill toward men. I, he looked like he was just all in the Christmas spirit. That hustle and bustle part. Some folks, that's what gets them ready. <laughs> Do you know how Matthew gets us ready? With a genealogy. That's not the way most of us get ready. Not standing around a tree. But Matthew gets us ready for the coming of Jesus Christ with a genealogy. Ancestry.com. And he begins to, 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 to give us the, the, the genealogy. Well, if he does it, that's the way I'm going to do it too. Matthew chapter 1, starting at verse 1, this is what it says. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. To Abraham was born Isaac, to Isaac Jacob, to Jacob Judah and his brothers. And to Judah were born Perez and Zerah by Tamar. And to Perez was born Hezron. And to Hezron Ram, and to Ram was born Amminadab, and to Amminadab Nashon. And to Nashon Salmon, and to Salmon was born Boaz by Rahab. And to Boaz was born Obed by Ruth, and to Obed Jesse, and to Jesse was born David the king. And to David was born Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. 
And to Solomon was born Rehoboam, and to Rehoboam, Abijah, and Abijah, Asa, and to Asa was born Jehoshaphat, and to Jehoshaphat, Joram, and to Joram, Uzziah. And to Uzziah was born Jotham, and to Jotham, Ahaz, and to Ahaz, Hezekiah. And to Hezekiah was born Manasseh, and to Manasseh, Amon, and to Amon, Josiah. And to Josiah were born Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the deportation to Babylon. And after the deportation to Babylon, to Jeconiah was born Shealtiel, and to Shealtiel, Zerubbabel, and to Zerubbabel was born Abayud, and to Abayud, Eliakim, and to Eliakim, Azor, and to Azor was born Zadok, and Zadok, Akim, and to Akim, Eliud, and to Eliud was born Eleazar, and Eleazar, Matan, and to Matan, Jacob, and to Jacob was born Joseph, the husband of Mary, by whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Are you ready yet? Well, if you're not ready, I'll keep on reading. Verse 17, therefore, all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, and from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations, and from the deportation to Babylon to the time of Christ, 14 generations. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, desired to put her away secretly. But when he had considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for it is he who will save his people from their sins. Well, there it is. Did it get you ready? Well, that's the way Matthew intends to get us ready. But there's something peculiar here. It says it's a genealogy, and genealogies follow the bloodline. And you follow the bloodline, we read 42 names. But at the end of the 42 names, verse 17. And verse 17 starts with a very important word in the Bible. And that word is, therefore. And whenever the Bible says therefore, you want to know what the therefore is there for. Because therefore points to everything that happened before it. So that we can look at the thing that comes next. Well, we've read 42 names. I mean, he says that it's a genealogy. And we look at that therefore so that we can point to what comes next. And what comes next, it says that which has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> in other words, see these 42 names? Now you can erase them because he wasn't born from that blood. He was from the Holy Spirit. Does that seem a little peculiar to you? <laughs> it seems more than just a little peculiar to me. You go through the 42 names to say, okay, now erase it because he was born of the Holy Spirit. So why? 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 The 42 names. Well, let's take a look. Verse 2 says to Abraham. Now, if you're going to have a family tree, that's the root that you want. That is the absolute root that you want. Abraham was known as a friend of God. He was known as the father of the faith. Father of the faith. So this isn't about uh, it, you know, the, our identity in, in a bloodline. It's, it's, it's not about Jesus' identity in a bloodline. It's, it's about something much, much more. Because you can't get a root that's any deeper than Abraham. And to Abraham was born Isaac and Isaac Jacob. Well, hold on just a minute. Jacob is here on the face. Jacob is definitely not the kind of person that most folks would warn him. He was a deceiver. He was a liar. He stole from his brother his blessing and his birthright and was just cold and conniving. When his father called out to, to, to Esau, his brother, he said, Esau, it was Jacob who answered, here I am. His father said, well, it sounds like Jacob, not Esau. Come here where I can put my hand on your arm. Because you see, Esau had very hairy arms and Jacob didn't. Well, Jacob had prepared for it. He put an animal skin on his arm. So when his father touched his arm, he said, well, you know, it sounded like Jacob, but it feels like Esau. So he said, let me kiss you. Well, Jacob was prepared for that too. 
He knew if he got close enough for his father to kiss him that his father would be able to smell that it smelled like Jacob and not like Esau. So he put on his brother's clothes so the deception would be, would be perfect. <laughs> his father kissed him and said, well, sounded like Jacob. It smells like Esau, feels like Esau. So here's the, the blessing. And Jacob, Jacob steals the blessing Jacob steals the birthright that, that belongs to his brother. And you know what Esau got? Bupkus. That's Yiddish for nothing. Zero. Zip. Nada. Cold and calculating are what Jacob is. Just, well, it doesn't stop there. Goes on and it says, to Judah were born Perez and Zerubbah Tamar. Now that's a strange one because Tamar is a woman and women aren't on the bloodline. But here she is on the family tree. And you don't hear many stories from the pulpit about Tamar. And there's a good reason, because most of those stories are X-rated, and they're very hard to tell from right here. But it's not just one woman on this family tree. There are three. There's Tamar, there's Rahab, and there's Ruth. Rahab is a harlot. And that's all I'm going to talk about that right now. And the Ruth, now, there's somebody you definitely want on your family tree. Ruth was known for her faith. She was known for being loyal. She was loving. Wow, that's, that's who you want in your family tree. And it says to Obed by Ruth and to Obed, Jesse. And to Jesse was born David the king. There we go. There's, some, there's a name we recognize, David the king. Every child that tall could tell you, that, what did David do? David took a slingshot, five smooth stones, and with the power of God's spirit, he slayed Goliath, the giant. Yep. He did what a whole army couldn't do. He slayed Goliath. Yeah, so while still a shepherd boy, slingshot, Five stones and the Spirit of God. Yes, that's the one we want. That's the one we want on our family tree. And it goes on from there. And to David was born Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. Well, let's hold the phone for just a minute. Because it doesn't, doesn't even say who her is. To David was born Solomon by her her who had been the wife of Uriah. Doesn't say who the wife of Uriah is, but we know. It's Bathsheba. And we know that story. David's on the roof of the palace. He's walking around and he looks down and he sees a woman taking a bath. He says, I'll have her. Bring her on up to the palace. And after the affair, she says, maybe you know my husband, Uriah. He's one of your soldiers. Well, here's David in the palace while his men are out in the field. He's eating palace food, warm and dry in the palace while they're out in the field eating MREs and getting rained on and who knows what else in the middle of battle. I'd... So to cover it up, to cover it all up, David tells his generals, put Uriah on the front line and in the heat of battle, pull back. And the expected happens. Uriah is killed there in battle. And to make the deception complete, what David does is he says, oh, I love my veterans. Yes, and you can't let that poor widow live down there below the palace. Bring her on up to the palace. She can stay with me. I'm just looking after my veterans, cold and calculated. What do we have on this family tree or are some limbs that are strong and some limbs that are broken and some limbs that are strong and broken. But it doesn't stop there. I'm not going to read the whole thing, I promise. But verse 10 says, Unto Hezekiah was born Manasseh. Now, you'd be hard-pressed to find a worse king than Manasseh. I mean, Manasseh worshipped anything that wiggled. He'd walk through fire. He'd do the witch dance. He, he, built, he, he worshiped idols. He was just a horrible king. 
And if he was bad, his son was even worse, Amon. And Amon, Amon, he was such a bad king that his own people killed him after he'd been king for only two years. And, and if the father's bad and the son's even worse, well, is there any hope at all for the grandson? And it tells us the grandson is Josiah. Josiah became king when he was eight years old. And he did the unexpected. He's really more preacher than he was king. He called the people to a relationship with God to rebuild the temple. And from an eight-year-old, there, there's hope. There's hope. Well, what Matthew's doing right here is he's saying this, this is the manger in which Jesus was laid. This is the arena that Jesus was born to. This is the world in which Jesus came. A world, a world that knew heartache and suffering and sin. And he says, this is the world. And at the right time, Jesus was born. Jesus came to this world where heartache was real. He provided hope. Where suffering is real, he provides strength. And where sin is real, our Savior, his name is Jesus, he provides forgiveness. Forgiveness. And for the next 28 chapters, Matthew begins to, to, to show us who Jesus is. He's the one that heals the sick. He's the one that gives sight to the blind. He's the one that gives life. To the dead, he's the one that gives forgiveness to the sin-soaked. And after 28 chapters, you'd think the people would rally around and say, we must follow him. He's the one that we give thanks to. He's the one we worship. He's the one that we give praise to. But instead of saying that, they said, give us Barabbas, crucify him. And that's what happened. They nailed Jesus to the cross. And from the cross, you'd expect to hear words like, if you don't love me, I don't love you. But that's not what we hear. From the cross, we hear words like, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And there on the cross, he died. And when he rose from the grave... When he rose from the grave, he gave us power, power that in the, the middle of our heartache, here and now we have hope, power of a, a risen Savior that in the, in the middle of suffering that you and I are given strength, the strength of his, his Spirit, that when defeated by sin, our Savior, his name is Jesus, he gives us forgiveness. His name is Jesus. And he, he came, he came not just away in a manger, but to make his home in our heart. This morning, it may be that you brought with you, maybe that you brought with you heartache. Today, you can call on the Savior. His name is Jesus. Call his name Jesus. Call his name Jesus and what he brings is hope. Or it may be that with you this morning you brought suffering. Nobody needed to tell you. You're in a hard place. Call on the name of Jesus and what he offers is strength. Strength in the middle of that suffering. Or it may be that this morning what you brought with you is a heart that's sin-soaked. It's broken and hurting. And you, you feel like you're beyond forgiveness. It's not true at all. It's the reason Jesus, our Savior, came. And you can call on his name. And today what he offers to you and to me 
is forgiveness. It may be this morning that you've not called on his name. You've not called on his strength. You've not called on his hope. You've not called the name of Jesus. Well, I want to pray with you right now. Join with me in prayer. Let's pray. Jesus, you came not to be away in a manger. You came to be here in our hearts. That you would give us a strength we don't have, a hope we don't have, a forgiveness we can't get on our own. And there's no hiding, there's no denying it. Lord, give us Give us strength enough this morning to call on your name, Jesus. Jesus, it's your name that calms our fears. It's your name that sets us free. It's your name that gives life. Jesus, I believe that the, those this morning that are calling on your name And I believe this morning that their lives that, that are changed, changed starting right now in your strength. Continue, continue to, to grow, to change, to give strength in our hearts that you might not just be away in a manger, that you might be here now, today, here in our hearts. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image, and what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our, when God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.